Okay guys, here's where we're starting today, is we're going to go over uh, the differences between DNA and RNA. First thing we need to do is revisit everything we know about nucleic acids. All right. so first things first, my two examples of nucleic acids are DNA and RNA. Okay. <clears throat> um, next thing, let's go ahead and do function. Alright, the function of a nucleic acid is to store and carry my genetic information, right? Now this is where, this is why we have two parts to this function, because we have two nucleic acids. My DNA stores my information, and then my RNA is going to be able to carry it, and we'll get to how it does that here in a little bit. Uh, nucleic acids, remember, this is a really big molecule, so this is a polymer. And so my monomer of a nucleic acid is a nucleotide. And a nucleotide is made of three parts, okay? My first part, the very, very outside, is a phosphate group. The second part is a sugar, and I'll put a star next to it because the sugar is going to diff be different between DNA and RNA. And then the next, or the last thing, are my nitrogen bases. And so if I wanted to draw a nucleotide, like here would be my phosphate, there's a P, and then that would be attached to a sugar, and then that sugar would be attached to some nitrogen base, right? This right here is what your basic nucleotide looks like. But whenever we go into the differences between DNA and RNA, this sugar will be different, and some of the nitrogen bases will be different. But the phosphate always stays the same. It's always a very, very outside. It's a really strong molecule. It helps keep it helps keep the shape. All right, that's pretty much what we need to know about nucleic acids right now. Now let's talk about DNA because this is this is what we've learned about so far. All right, DNA. So let's go through what it means. Remember, DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid because that's the D in a deoxyribonucleic acid. All right, so the sugar, right? We said that up here that the sugars are going to be different. The sugar in DNA, that's that deoxyribose. And we know it's a sugar because it ends in OSEs. All right, uh, let's do structure. Remember, DNA, this is a two stranded molecule. And because it's two stranded, it gets to take a special shape. That's that double helix, right? And these two strands, these are held by a hydrogen bond. All right, um, let's talk about the nitrogen bases. All right, nitrogen bases, they have four of them, and they go in pairs. Remember, A's always pair with T's, and C's always pair with G's, right? That's the nitrogen bases is how they always go together. Um, and then let's talk about the process that DNA goes through. If I need to make a copy of DNA, that's called replication. So replication is when I double my DNA. And remember, the entire reason we double my DNA is to make more cells. And the reason I want to make more cells is because my organism either needs to be able to grow he needs to be able to repair his cells, or he has to replace his cells. And then DNA, where it's found, this is found in my nucleus. All right, so that's all the information that we should have known going into the stuff for today. Now, let's talk about RNA. RNA. All right. RNA, so let's talk about what that stands for. RNA stands for ribose nucleic acid, right? That's RNA. Now my sugar for RNA, remember we talked about oses, my sugar is ribose. So that's one difference between DNA and RNA. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about why. This is going to be a one-stranded molecule. His nitrogen bases, he differs a little bit, so he still has C's and G's going together, 
But now, A, instead of being paired with T, he pairs with U. U stands for uracil. And that's going to be one of the big differences between DNA and RNA. Um, processes, we're going to go through, through them both. But this is going to go through transcription. And it's also going to go through translation. And we'll, I'll make a video going over both of those. Uh, and then location, we can talk about, about where this happens. And if we went back to that original function from nucleic acids, remember DNA stores it, well, the function of RNA is to carry my genetic information. That's his entire job. Okay, so let's draw a really awesome picture, and we'll kind of talk about why RNA is so important to us. So let's start off, I'm just going to make a really big cell. So here's a huge cell. Because it's a circle, we know this is an animal cell, and animal cell cell type is a eukaryote. Remember the one thing that sets eukaryotes away, or sets them apart from a prokaryote, is the fact that my eukaryote cell has a really big structure right here. This is my nucleus. Now, that's my nucleus, but this line right here, right, the line that I use to, to make the nucleus, so this entire thing, this is my nuclear membrane, which is going to be super important to us here right about now, because my nuclear membrane has a bunch of holes in it, right? So we're just going to draw a couple. So there's a couple holes. All right, why do you think a nuclear membrane would have a bunch of holes? Well, that's that way things can come in and out of my nucleus, right? So structure, function kind of stuff. Now, the molecule that we hold in our nucleus, we just talked about it, this is going to be my DNA. So I'm going to draw a really big strand of DNA. There you go, because remember DNA is twisted ladder double helix. So DNA right here. Now, if you look at the size of DNA, DNA is much too large to fit through those tiny holes. Because remember, when we talk about DNA, DNA just stores my information. And if this whole DNA molecule stores information for my organism, I want to keep it super safe. And so this is the safest place inside my cell is within the nucleus. But, you know, your organisms, they're going to need things um, during their lifespan, right? They're going to need different types of proteins, et cetera, et cetera. And so what we have to do, though, is get this information and actually get it to code for something. Because way long ago, when we went through DNA, remember, DNA is ultimately going to code for a protein. Because DNA, this is going to store my genetic information, and then my protein, this was the physical expression of DNA. And so, like, let's say if somebody has blue eyes, well, that information is stored here in the DNA, and then the protein actually lets us see blue eyes. But my DNA is a super important molecule, and if he leaves the nucleus, if he comes out here and he gets damaged, there's no way I can, I can fix that. I, I don't have another copy. I only have this one. So he has to stay in here. This is the role of RNA, because we said RNA is going to carry information. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get the information from DNA, we're going to carry it, and then we'll take it to where proteins are made. Well, we know my DNA is in the nucleus, and if you remember from way back when we talked about proteins, proteins are made in the ribosome. And so I can draw a really nice ribosome right over here, and it kind of looks like this, kind of looks like a, a wonky hamburger. It has two sections where things can fit in the middle. All right, so let's pretend that your organism really needs to make a new skin cell, right? And so if we need to make just skin cells, it would be wasteful and it would take a lot of energy to copy this whole DNA strand. And so if I just need one particular thing for my organism, I'm just going to copy that one little section, right? And when we've talked about sections of DNAs, this is a gene. 
And so if we go, well, we can go all the way down here. A gene, by definition, is a segment of DNA that codes for a protein, right? That's what DNA does, or that's what a gene does. And so let's imagine, on my DNA molecule, I have this gene, and it's made of a couple different bases. So let's say maybe it's A, T, C, G. There you go. That's my, that's my gene, super short. And so what's going to happen is my RNA, my RNA is going to come in, and he's going to get this section. And so if we go back to my RNA rules, right, when we talk about RNA nitrogen bases, C's go with G's, and then A's go with U's. So if I have an A right here, now I'll make a U. If I have a T, I'll make an A. If it's a C, a G, a G, a C. And so now, I just made a single line of a gene. So it went U, A, G, C. And if you look at the structural difference, we said DNA was two strands. Well, look, RNA, that's what we just made. We made mRNA, and I'll talk about where the M is. That mRNA is single-stranded. Because he's single-stranded, he's tiny enough that he can fit through one of those nuclear pores, and he can come out here into my cytoplasm. All right, so let's talk about what M stands for super quickly. Because it's still RNA, it's carrying my information M stands for messenger. So this is messenger RNA. His entire function, his job, is to get uh, the gene info, whoops, info from DNA. That's his job. He's a messenger. So he went to my DNA, he grabbed the message, and then he left. Now, what I'm going to do, because remember, this is my goal right here, is to go from DNA to RNA to a protein. Well, my DNA did its job. It, it, it stored my information. My RNA, well, he went and grabbed it, so he did his job. Now we just have to take it to the ribosome so we can make a protein. So what we're going to do is we're just going to shove this mRNA through this ribosome, right? Remember, this is a ribosome right here. He's going to shove it through the ribosome. When he shoves it through the ribosomes, we're going to have a bunch of amino acids coming in. So here's my amino acids. They're going to come into my ribosome. And then out the other side, let's just make it a, there you go, I wanted to make a cell. So there's a cell. I made a protein. And so that's how we make just specific genes inside our bodies is we get the information from my DNA, right? This is this part. Then, once I get that information, it leaves the nucleus, it'll travel to the ribosome, amino acids will hook together, and then I'll get to make my protein. And so, if we look, um, if we look at DNA versus RNA, right, so if I want to make a nice little chart, here's DNA, and then here's RNA, alright, so big structural differences, let's do function first. Okay, this stores information, this is going to carry information. He stores it as two strands, RNA stores it as one strand. The sugar here for DNA is deoxyribose, and my sugar here in RNA is ribose. All right, another difference, nitrogen bases, A's and T's go together here, C's and G's, versus in my RNA, nitrogen bases, A's pair with U, but C's still go with G's. And then, kind of not anything structural, so I'll put a little star, DNA has to stay inside the nucleus because he's two strands. But my RNA, because he's single-stranded, he gets made in the nucleus, but then he's going to travel to the ribosome, so that way I can actually make a protein. All right, that's everything you guys need to know about DNA and RNA kind of as a collective whole. If you have questions, you let me know, et cetera, et cetera.